So let's begin our discussion on alkenes. Now alkenes like alkanes are simply hydrocarbons, but unlike alkanes, alkenes contain a double bond. And in this lecture, we're going to examine exactly what a double bond is. So let's begin by looking at the simplest alkene known as ethylene, also known as ethene. Now ethylene is composed of two carbons connected by a double bond and two H atoms found on both sides of those carbons. So let's begin by building or creating this ethylene molecule. So let's create it using a methyl radical. Recall that a methyl radical is simply a carbon atom attached to three H bonds or three H atoms via sp2 hybridized orbitals. So each of these sigma bonds, covalent sigma bonds, are sp2 hybridized. And we also have a pure 2p orbital that contains a single electron within that 2p orbital. So to build this ethylene, let's simply replace the H atom here with a methylene atom, with a CH2 atom, or a CH2 molecule, sorry. What do we get? Well, if we simply replace this with a CH2 molecule, we get the following picture. So we get a carbon-carbon bond, we get four CH bonds, two on each side, and we have a 2p orbital on both of these carbons that has an electron in each orbital. So firstly, let's examine what type of bond this carbon-carbon bond is. So this carbon donates an sp2 hybridized orbital. Remember, these guys are sp2 hybridized. And this carbon also donates an sp2 hybridized orbital. So when we combine two atomic orbitals, we must form two molecular orbitals according to quantum mechanics. And so our lower in energy, more stable molecular orbital will be due to the overlap of these green regions. And we will get the following sp2, sp2 sigma, bonding molecular orbital, or simply MO. So the two electrons, one electron in each of this carbon, in each of these sp2 hybridized orbitals, will go into this lower in energy bonding molecular orbital. Now we're also going to have this anti-bonding molecular orbital, but since it's high in energy and it's, more, and it's less stable, the electrons will not go into that orbital. So both electrons will be in this molecular orbital. And so this covalent bond is sp2, sp2 hybridized sigma bonding molecular orbital. And now notice one more thing. Notice we have these two 2p orbitals. And, and they're both parallel to one another. In other words, these two guys are parallel to one another and they're perpendicular to either of these CH bonds. And so because these guys are parallel and because they have the same exact energy as one another, they will create an overlapping condition. So once again, just like we have an overlap here, we're going to have an overlap here. So let's combine these 2p orbitals. So here we have a 2p orbital from this carbon combined with the 2p orbital from this carbon. Once again, we're combining two atomic orbitals to form two different molecular orbitals. However, now they're no longer sigma, they're called pi, okay? So one is a pi or 2p, 2p pi bonding molecular orbital, and the second one is a 2p, 2p pi anti-bonding molecular orbital. So there will be one node between these two orbitals, and that means this guy will be higher in energy and less stable, and so electrons will tend to go into the lower in energy, more stable bond, so this pi bond here. Now, notice one difference between our sigma and our pi bonds. Both of these sp2 hybridized orbitals contain 33% or 33.3% 
S character, while these two P orbitals contain no S character. So that means because these guys contain the more stable S character, these are more stable. So that means they're lower in energy than these two P orbitals. So when these two orbitals, when these two P orbitals combine to form a pi orbital, this pi orbital is higher in energy than this sp2, sp2 sigma bonding molecular orbital. And that means this will be more stable than our pi bond. So now let's redraw our diagram for this ethylene molecule. So here we have our two carbons and they create an sp2, sp2 hybridized molecular orbital given here and it also creates this interaction here between our pure 2p orbitals. Remember, this electron is found at the same time in this region as well as in this region. So that means there will be interaction between these two uh, lobes here. And so this is known as our pi bond and this is known as our sigma bond. And once again, this pi bond will be higher in energy than this sigma bond. Another way of drawing this, a more simpler way, is simply with two uh, bonds here, two dashes here. Now notice that this is the sigma bond and the top one is the pi bond. So let's review. The sigma bond contains more S character and is therefore lower in energy and more stable or stronger because remember, the more stable something is, the more stronger it is than the pi bond. Therefore, the pi bond is less stable because it's higher in energy and therefore it's more reactive. Now whenever we input energy to break our uh, pi bond or to break our double bond, our pi bonds break first. So let's look at one more important detail about our uh, double bonds. So this is a single bond. This is an ethane molecule. So notice that in an ethane molecule, we have one sigma bond and this sigma bond is able to rotate. So we create conformations or conformers of ethane. So we could have an eclipsed conformer and we could have a staggered conformer. Now, notice what happens in our double bond molecule. So here we have the following ethylene. Lead. So notice that these CH bonds on ethylene are on the same plane. And these two orbitals here, this pi orbital is created by an overlap of two p orbitals found perpendicular to either of these CH bonds. And notice what happens. Notice now there is no rotation. And that's because if there was rotation, these two p orbitals would no longer be in parallel. When I rotate these, these guys would lose that overlap and therefore would destabilize the molecule. So that means because these two p orbitals like to stay in parallel to one another, they like to stay in the same plane, this double bond will not allow rotation. And so our ethylene molecule will not rotate in the same way that this molecule will rotate.